Hello, welcome to another video. In this one, uh, we're going to be discussing the lunge movement pattern. Um, probably out of all of them, this is, for me anyway, probably the most enjoyable. Um, if the bending patterns, I would argue, is the most important, the gait pattern probably the most complex. This is probably the most fun. So this first one is just a basic quad stretch. If I just take that back for a second. So this is a the better way to stretch the quad with a, a Swiss ball than the than standing quad stretch. And you can see how this relates very much to the lunge because we're actually in the lunge position. So, so where people may have stiffness in this back trailing leg of the, the hip or the quad, so sometimes it's around the knee, sometimes it's around the hip, this is a great thing you can use at the beginning to enhance the lunge pattern. So if, you know, if you're really struggling to get in position, you're never going to be able to control it. You're going to cheat through it. You're often going to probably put pain into the knee here because you'll often see people really lunging forward um, and because this, this hip won't be able to stretch correctly or the rectus femoris through the quad here. So, so this is a good exercise just to use to help you enhance that, that pattern in the beginning. Um, so basic mobility drill. Again, there's lots of things I've left out here just to, you know, because I could really have 100 instead of 10. But um, then following that up with just basic hip extension, it doesn't look anything like a lunge, but you're just guaranteeing you've got some, some good uh, control through the posterior chain, really be able to control the hip um, in, in its basic action and just getting some some foundational strength into the into the legs before you start hammering them in the standing position. So again, again like it's not really going to change too much. Probably the stretch, the previous one, will do more than this one. I, again, I could use lots of different versions of isolated things, but just for a basic understanding of getting the hip working. So then now I move into a into the lunge position itself. So before I try and make it on the move, I'll just make sure I've got this the static control. So what I want to see is, you know, I, you know, like it doesn't matter if it's not a perfect 90 degrees, all right? Um, you can see Mel here got a little bit of stiffness on this left leg. Her left hip gives her a lot of trouble. When, when she does the other one, it's a little bit more compact. But, you know, as long as she can keep good control, not hunching or slouching or doing something, you, that's what you'll often see is the posture will be lost as they'll, their head will be over here somewhere. As long as she can maintain good control... Uh, really probably feeling that she's pushing more through the heel on this than, than anything, all right? And that's where you can get that, that posterior chain kicking in for you, all right? So, so before you start doing anything fancy with it, just make sure you've got the stance correct. See so how she's got her back foot on the toes, go straight down. And, and that's the other thing you probably look at this one, by the way, is that back foot, you want to be able to make sure that it, that it stays quite vertical. If it starts to head back, as you can see here, that Mel's doing, it's usually trying to accommodate a compensation with the hip or the quad, all right? So um, you just try to clean that up as best you can. You'll see probably she'll be a bit easier on this side. The troublesome hip is the, probably doing more of the load now, but you'll see that's much more free on the trailing leg. You can see, see before when she was down at the bottom there, so if I hold it there, you can see how it's a little bit straighter where the other one... And then this starting to straighten up a bit more than what the other one was. Um, any little cracks that you see in this become bigger cracks when they stand up. All right, so or when they're on the move, I should say. All right, so that's the, the advantage that the lunge has over the squats, the deadlifts, even the single leg things. They're all static, standing, still type things. The lunge is unique in that it can move. So now we go from a stationary spot where she has to, you can't line things up. She's got to find it while she's on the move. Now, when I do these moving ones, I'll start with the reverse lunge first because it's easier to control than the forward lunge. And the simple reason for that is when, when she's heading backwards, basically like your, your anterior parts, so your abdominals are much usually much stronger than the, the extensors of the back. Now, when you're heading backwards this way, these guys are in, have got a, a momentum on their side, so they're actually... Um, got an advantage, a mechanical advantage over the stronger ones being the flexors. So it makes it easier to stay upright because the momentum is helping you. So it's easier for a person to keep their postural control with a reverse lunge than a forward lunge. And there's no deceleration. So when, when we see the forward one that she'll do next, 
when there's a forward one, now her, her muscles will have to have a decelerating component. So it's a much more strenuous on the muscles to slow her body down and basically slam the brakes on. All right, so the, the backward one is one you'd start first. Now you start to see this forward one, so it's a lot harder to control because her whole body has to sort of slow herself down or she'll go straight over the, into the knee there and have this huge flexion and fall forward because the momentum is taking her that way. All right, so so this one's uh, only, the only, you only do this one after you um, have executed the other one. And the other thing with this is like pushing back, especially when you add load to them, so if she was holding barbells or a, a dumbbells or a barbell, the pushing back is a lot more strenuous than the than the step back on the reverse lunge. All right, so that's the forward lunge, and you can do this alternating, um, and it gives you a, a, a nice sort of exercise that has a bit of control to it. And then once you've got the forward and the back one, then you want to get the side one. So the lateral lunge, this is one that brings in a lot more hip control now. This is where you start to see the similar action of the deadlift. This is the only lunge where we see bending over. All right. Now, this one also brings in the adductor mobility. So it's a, a different type of hip mobility on this one. So when she's bent over there, you can see how she's got really good deadlift form here. This leg here has to be dead straight. Now, if there's tight hamstrings, tight adductors, poor hip control, you'll often see the knee right here bent a little bit because they just won't have the mobility to straighten that leg out. This leg is here is taking all of the load. All right, so it's just where you're really loading up, the, especially the posterior chain, because she's in the bent over position, where those forward and back ones probably a little bit more quadriceps. All right, and then you get to see the other side as well. Um, and her left side's her weak side, so I don't know if you noticed, but she sort of shortens her stance a little bit. If we gave her load, you would notice any of the little technique flaws become a big flaw, all right? But this is a very important lunge, especially for sports, because there's lots of lateral movement in sports. So now, so far, I've got stationary, forward, and backward, and sideways. Now I bring in multi-directional. So this brings in the angle lunge, and you'll see there how she pivoted that back foot to, to rotate. And then I, I'm basically going to move around in, in every single direction, so forward, angle, side backward angle now so now we bring in the the reverse lunge again all right and this with everything we saw on the stationary lunges we need again now um, so easier on these backward ones as we spoke about already the forward ones are a lot more harder to control but these angle ones are really important again for sports really crucial for this because this is where you get a lot of the uh, the the change of direction movements that you'd see with agility training and stuff like that as well so this is our lateral one again, and I'll slow down this one, this next angle one, and you'll have to see that, that back foot will pivot in. See that? So if I just pause that there, so that back foot, how I had to rotate in, that was actually being driven by the hip. All right, so this is where you're really, really putting the hip into all these different combinations. So this time it's going internal, but on the other side it's going external. All right, and then this one's having to control all the weight and decelerate at the same time maintain perfect postural control so great exercise because it's moving in every single direction all right so uh, again with all these exercises obvious obvious progression is that to add load so uh, dumbbells kettlebell barbell whatever you whatever you, the equipment you may have now that we've got the multi-direction one we can bring in the walking lunge um, very popular exercise usually abused and not done very well but if, if you've got all the other ones down you've mastered them then you should be pretty good to do this one again like this very tiring because the the braking element the deceleration is very important but all the rules of the same ones we've just seen uh, still apply here it's just much harder because obviously you're on the move and then the fatigue can increase quite dramatically all right so with fatigue often you see technique mistakes made all right so the, the object of this is to try to maintain form uh, as best as you can so staying nice and upright um, keeping you you know really pushing through the heel on that front foot when you're coming down so you don't end up in the toes if you end up in the toes you'll end up in the knees all right so you're trying to maintain good stride length i see a lot of people shorten this off when they get tired so you want to make sure you have the same width you had when you did the stationary one and then just moving forward <coughs> um, as, as you were with the forward ones before 
I mean, just keep it. And you also see here there's another little tip for you. If I just pause that, see how the width of her legs are, the, are about this far? I often see people walking on a line here. It's almost like they're walking on a tightrope. If they do that, you'll see a lot of like lateral shifting. So that they'll sort of fall over all the time out to one side. They just because uh, they're they're basically walking on the line. So I always tell people, imagine you're walking on like a train track. All right. So if you're sort of walking on lines like that, try to have that that stance, and then you'll, it's easier to keep the alignment uh, as you as you're continuing through the movement. All right. So that's the uh, again you could add to make this harder. Um, you know, barbell, dumbbells, all different versions of equipment to really make the body work that extra bit harder. All right, so that's the walking lunge. So let's look at the next one. All right, so this next one is like all the other videos with the previous patterns, we start to bring into play more things, so more joints. It's much more integrated. It's not just about the legs this time. There's a lot more things to control, a lot more moving pieces. So this is the uh, contralateral single arm press. All right, so this is very, again, relates a lot to sports. As you notice with all of these ones, when they get really complicated, they very much look like a sporting movement. This one is very similar timing to what you would see for a layup in basketball or jumping or, you know, because when you want to jump and get athletic performance, you'll work on this opposite side. That's why it's contralateral. So it's right leg with left hand, all right, because you can stretch out further. You can rotate. You can, you're much more athletic. Then if it was this is if it was ipsy lateral to be the dumbbell lifting on this side, that's not athletic at all. All right, so this is where you're really learning great control. But this is again where we see slings brought into it. So this is like a deep longitudinal sling this time because we're moving vertically. All right, so again that the the strength is being driven from the legs. So she's got to load up into the lunge, and the strength is really coming from the glutes and the quads here to push all of the energy up in the air so that her shoulder isn't left hanging with all the load being thrust upon it. So timing is everything. Core control here. So she has to get good control of the obliques um, in combination with the glutes and the foot even is, a, is an element here. If the foot breaks down, that all breaks down. So if there's excessive pronation where she rolls in, the, the whole lot of her goes. All right. So this is a great, great exercise for really, really ex extremely exhausting, by the way. So um, a great one that brings into play everything that we've done previously just with the lunge and now trying to integrate it into the whole system. All right, so let's look at the next one, which is a power exercise. Okay, so this last one is just a simple jumping lunge. I could have brought in more like split jerks and things like that, which, you know, uh, arguably more about deadlifting and that at times as well, but um, the lunge stance is awfully used in them. But... If we just start with a basic jumping lunge, so again you start in a perfect lunge and then you jump up and the object is to land both feet at the same time and decelerate straight into a lunge again. And again, you, all of the things we've spoken about so far, maintaining good postural control, um, that perfect stance width. Um, the only difference with this one and the other one is that you just got to be extremely fast. So you need the strength on all the other ones to be able to have the, the time to be able to jump up in the air, and if I just play it, you can see, if I don't have enough height, I won't be able to uh, clear my, my, I'll sort of be in a galloping thing, where really I want to be landing with both feet hitting the ground at the same time, just like that. All right, so again, another a bit like the walking lunge, extremely exhausting. You don't really need to add load to this. If, if you do add load, it probably slows it down too much. If you like medicine balls that work and all power training, if you add too much load, it sort of ruins the timing of it. So it's best done with light loads and explosively fast. But this is an example of like really enhancing your lunge pattern. Um, if you're pretty good at this one, you, you, you'd already be exceptional at the others anyway. So, all right. So there's um, there's the lunge pattern for you. I hope you enjoyed those variations and see how you go putting them into into action in your training. All right. I'll see you in the next one.